All right, guys, it's Copper Cutlass here. So, you see I got my intake on there. I laid my gaskets in place. Um, doing this a little differently just for now because I want to get an idea how bad the port alignment is. It's not too bad. Um, there is a bit of a core shift that's noticeable on the gasket. Um, after the small clip, I'll flip it over. I'll show you guys what's going on. By the way, happy Friday. It is Friday. Uh, I haven't been out here in a little bit. Um... I know we checked for, you know, springs and stuff, which they came in. So we got a box of goodies today from Summit Racing. Um, I bought the J-Type um, valve spring compressor uh, because I hate the knobby type deals. This is just, you bolt this where your rocker arm stud goes, your rocker arm stud, and you push down, remove your keepers, you're in business. This is fairly easy peasy. So I like this style really really do um we got our push rods i already took one out and i double checked my pattern and it's still good we still have clearance very important um big shout out to mr dave worthington for offering up a bunch of guide plates uh he didn't have anything that would have worked out but thanks anyway uh funny moment he calls me i see an ohio number and i thought i saved his uh his number but i did it and i thought it was a scam call and i didn't hear anything and i said f you so sorry dave public apology that was awkward um so i got the standard 5 16 5 16 guide plates i have to open up the base to 7 16 no big deal uh we'll kill some unibits doing that or some carbide let me get this dial indicator that dial indicator micrometer out of there so we got our valve springs uh, I hope this is cool, but big shout out to Jim Cooper, JCE Fuel Systems. Uh, he helped me out with valve springs. Now, I learned a lot about valve springs. And what I really learned is that it's a little bit of witchcraft. There is no definitive valve spring that is going to work for your application per se. Now, the cam manufacturer will recommend a valve spring based off of the core of the cam, um, from my research, there's two different types of flat tappet cores, I believe, maybe more. What I encountered, there was a few. Um, so that will dictate how much spring pressure you can throw at it. Um, not only that, but also valve lift, coil bind, diameter. Obviously, diameter, all that stuff matters. So you have to keep in mind that there's actually a lot going on in a valve spring. A lot more than I can make in a video, and there's probably better videos out there. But I learned a lot. Again, with every engine, I learned something new. And with this engine, I decided to actually dive in and learn more about valve springs, and I learned a lot. Um, I was fairly close in the spring that I chose, but there is a mathemat mathematical equation, but you also have to take into consideration your cam core material, which is embossed into the cam in a casting number. So there's that. And I'll let you guys do your own homework on this because my take on it might be a little bit different, but, um, you know, you can kind of get away with a valve spring that's similar. The main specific thing is knowing what core cam you have. Um, so like, let's say very similar spec camshaft that's in my engine now. Uh, I have a 402 rate uh, set of valve springs from Lenati, and they um, that's what they recommended. So on this engine, I just called up Lunati. They uh, recommended a spring, and that's what I ran because that's what they said should work. And I trusted them in their choice, and it's been good so far. So, but with this set of valve springs, I asked around, and he he uh, he told me to reach out to him, and I did. And I told him what I had in mind that was very close to the spring specs that I had as far as diameter, height. Um, you know, you have to take into consideration coil, bi coil bind and all that. So, I was close. Uh, he recommended a 390 rate. I think I was at a 376. Um, so I I did my homework. I picked. I asked around. I got some feedback. Uh, this is where you can kind of pick and choose on the interwebs um, your info, but you got to be careful. So I, I Jim is a trusted source. 
he's uh he's friends with uh jj and when he reached out to me and said hey man shoot me a message i was like hell yeah um and so we chose the trick flow pac springs all right and so for the push rods we got trick flow 5 16 um 80 thou wall one piece hardened push rods uh pretty much what i use in almost every engine i build uh, is trick flow uh push rods there for the money the quality everything you're not going to beat it so anyway enough rambling on i have to clean this mess before we move on but i'll get to the next point here soon all right and now this is a very crude and yes i know i'm using the engine as a work stand but it's an engine part so it's okay not very professional i keep saying that so um let's go down here if i don't fucking fall over you guys probably can't make out the marks but I lined up my marks after laying the intake down. Now, this isn't an exact science right now. And I'm doing this very, very crude for a reason. I just want to see how much material I'm going to have to take off of the uh, intake. Because this intake is designed for a small block, but there's enough runner material. So if you were to use the Edelbrock heads, this is the intake you would use. This or a, a Victor intake for a small block. So you could see how much material I have to take off of the uh, uh, roof of the runners off and a little bit on the base and you could see the core shift. So you could see on one side, there's less material than the other. There is a core shift. Uh, I actually encounter that. I've encountered that on three different intakes where I've done this. So the way you're actually supposed to do this is, um, so what I do is I'll lay a couple of studs down and I'll put a little bit of high tack uh, in an area where I know it'll peel off right so obviously the gas gets off but let's say uh, I'll do some high tack like in a wide area here and here on both sides or both ends of the gasket I should say and then you let it dry you put some Prussian blue around the ports and then you gently put your intake down and you need both gaskets in place where they're going to be. So this is why you use bolts uh, so that the bolt is going to locate the gasket. And then uh, once you put your Prussian blue, uh, you lay your intake down and you see what the squeeze is going to be like. So um, it's it's a bit of a tedious uh, process but it's not impossible and at this point you know what I laid the intake down with the gaskets the surfaces seem pretty flat I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the bolt holes I have to say that weird otherwise it sounds like I say buttholes when I say it so not the bolt holes so buttholes bolt holes yeah, it's almost the same thing so either way um yeah uh you know, on the on the gasket, uh, you know, we're not going to have to cut anything. Uh, these gaskets that I bought match the runners fairly okay. Um, and then we're going to have to open up the intake. But when we're going to do our bluing, you're going to do uh, just around the port of the gasket. So then uh, you can see where the outline of your main gasket sits and then that's how much you have to actually open up so let's say you you're, you're pretty much transferring a pattern right so you're gonna uh, yes i did ramble there for a little bit until i got back into the right track of mine so if you guys caught that you're amazing so either way uh we're gonna put a little bit of like prussian blue here right and let's say this is on the surface you put your intake down and then you're gonna transfer that opening onto the intake and uh, that's going to be, you're going to have a defined, so with the Prussian blue, you end up with a little bit of like a embossment with it if you let it dry right. And where that embossment falls in place, that's where you're going to end up grinding. And uh, we do have to open these up quite a bit. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to, instead of sending it out, I'm going to spend the money. I do need new carbides anyway. And we're going to do this at home. Once the engine's all done and ready for it, and I might order, I know Cometic makes a thinner version of this gasket. If I can get it within the next couple of weeks, I will order it. 
If not, then we'll just use these. Because these are 60 thou thickness. I believe 30 thou is readily available. Um, and uh, actually, I just had a thought, and I don't even want to say it. So, uh, But either way, these are 60 thou. Now, the intake with no gasket fits in there great. Um, so really, I have another option too. I can send it out to my buddy and have the intake O-ringed. He's got a program for that. But at this point, I want to keep it simple. So, um, yeah, once our valve train's in place, our lifters are in place, we got all that figured out. I still have to degree the can before any of that. We're going to button up the oil pan. The very last thing we're going to do is the, the intake. And uh, I'm not going to send it out to the machine shop. We're just going to roll the dice and uh, hopefully it should be good. Uh, I think a little bit of my oil wicking issues with my current engine is the fact that I don't have any oil splash retainment. So the oil hits the intake nonstop. So, you know, one of these little lifter valley trays keeps oil off of the intake significantly enough to um, just keep the oil away from the gasket for the most part. Um, so my my intake gaskets have been wicking oil, but no vacuum leak, oddly enough, and a little bit of oil tracing on the intake. You guys haven't seen the videos. So on that note, uh, I may I may not have some time this weekend. We're wrapping up our house project, um, but things are going good. Um, yeah, and every, everything seems to be going pretty pretty well on our build so far, and, and we're on the right track, I believe. So. I'm, I have to buy a set of valve spring shims. I don't think I have any left here. Uh, so I'm going to have to order some to adjust the height. But actually, um, I took out a shim. Remember, guys, I told you I left out a shim for a reason. Well, these springs, installed spring height is a 1.875. That's 1.895. The shim I took out was a 15,000 shim. So I left it out for a little bit of adjustability, and it worked out in our favor because guess what? I put that shim back on. We shouldn't need to change anything, but I'm still going to check every single valve for installed height so that we can get it as close as possible. 10 thou is enough to change your rate altogether. So um, we'll let you guys go. Share, like, subscribe. Uh, again, uh, big thanks to Jim Cooper, JCE Fuel Systems. I uh, believe it's JCE. JJ can correct me, but I believe it's JCE Fuel Systems. He helped me out with the valve springs. Uh, thanks to Dave for offering up the guide plates. Didn't work out, but thanks anyway. I really appreciate it. Um, and we'll let you guys go. Share, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Copper Colors. See you.